British lawmakers have voted to postpone a vote on the terms of the UK's departure from the European Union. In a dramatic Saturday sitting of Parliament, Prime Minister Boris Johnson failed to secure enough backing to hold a vote on the Brexit deal he negotiated in Brussels just days ago. Lawmakers agreed by 322 to 306 to withhold their approval. A defiant Johnson says he will still try to meet his deadline at the end of this month. Parliament has clearly spoke. Well, to discuss today's historic vote, I am joined in the studio by DW's Brexit, Brexit Anna analyst Rob Mudge. I'm also joined by, in London by our correspondent Charlotte Potts and we have DW correspondent Bernd Rieget in Brussels. Um, Charlotte, I'll start with you. Tell us, what is happening where you are? What are reactions to this vote? Well, outside here of Parliament, of the Houses of Parliament, the atmosphere is really, really heated. There have been some major protests going on in London today. Um, th those are unrelated to what happened in the House of Commons today. People asking for a second referendum for a people's vote. And some of the protesters I just saw uh, pursuing, heckling uh, conservative MPs that left Parliament after that vote. Uh, so very heated atmosphere outside of the Houses of Parliament and inside side, of course, a major blow to Boris Johnson, who was hoping to have a very decisive vote today on the Brexit deal that he has negotiated with the European Union. That, of course, never happened because this amendment passed that now makes him ask for yet another extension to the Brexit deadline, uh, and he will have to do so by 11 p.m. tonight. Yes, well, as you say, a big blow to Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who was hoping to have this deal voted on and hopefully approved today. Um, Johnson was defiant, though, in his speech to Parliament. This is what he had to say. I will not negotiate a delay with the EU. And neither, and, and, and neither does the law compel me to do so. I will tell uh, our friends and colleagues in the EU exactly what I have told everyone in the last 88 days that I have served as Prime Minister, that further delay would be bad for this country, bad for, the, bad for our European Union and bad for democracy. So, Rob, a very sort of defiant and determined Boris Johnson there. What does this mean? I mean, can he simply ignore these laws and just well, and push that's on? that's what I've been trying to get my head around uh, ever since I heard the statement. Um, it seems to be that his assessment or understanding or interpretation of the law is different from uh, many others. Uh, there have been reports uh, that I've just been reading that apparently government lawyers are already trying to assess what legal loopholes there are for him to avoid an extension. Apparently one of them could be that Johnson simply refuses to attend the next EU summit where they would maybe debate and decide on an extension. Uh, another point is that he will refuse to appoint an EU commissioner, uh, leaving that, that position empty. And one other point that I've uh, just discovered is that uh, they may veto the EU budget, which is also now being discussed. Um, so uh, apparently the whole legal uh, ramifications, the process is already, the whole machine is, is up and running. Um, but I'm really still, um, I don't know. Trying I'm to work trying it Trying to work out, out what yeah. his interpretation of the law is uh, and how it could differ from what other experts uh, seem to be is pretty clear that he is bound by the Bent Act to go and seek the extension. Well, it sounds like they're still trying to work out what their determination of the law is as well. Um, but what does this mean for the EU? Will they consider another extension if, uh, you know, as is expected, he will, he will have to ask for? Well, the letterbox in Brussels is open and every application that arrives here will, of course, be considered by the European Union. They are required to do that by the law, actually. Uh, but uh, the EU would be somewhat reluctant to grant yet another extension. And uh, the president of the EU Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, said that already two days ago he um, was reluctant uh, to even speak about a prolongation. Let's listen in. And I was ruling out that there will be any kind of prolongation. 
if we have a deal, we have a deal. And there is no need for prolongation. That's not only the British view, that's my view too. So, uh, EU Commission, uh, President Juncker, Juncker, just getting very tongue-tied, excuse me, they're saying an extension from the EU is not on the table. Brussels clearly tired of the back and forth, Burnt, but others in Brussels have indicated something else. Can you tell us a bit about that? Well, Mr Juncker said it's not on the table if there is a deal, as, but as of now there is no deal because the House of Commons did not agree on the deal. So in the end the EU would of course grant this, this extension because the EU doesn't want to be blamed for letting Britain crash out on the 31st without any deal. So there will be some negotiations, also maybe some, uh, uh, some opposition from France, which was reluctant in the last time, in April, when a uh, prolongation was done. But in the end, uh, they will do it. And the spokesperson of uh, Mr. Juncker just uh, said, it is now up to the British to to explain what the next steps will be. The ball is still in the court of Boris Johnson. Definitely at this stage. Now, Rob, more political tennis here, more back and forth. It's been three and a half years since the original Brexit vote, two extensions later, you know, all the millions of Brits left hanging, kind of yet again waiting, wondering, well, how is this going to go down in history? <laughs> Uh, momentous. I mean, you know, regardless of what happens now, the whole process, these three and a half years, have just been one long road of twists and turns and have, I think, damaged uh, society. They've created a rift within uh, the electorate. Um, um, it's damaged the UK's psyche. I think it will take them, regardless of, of where we go from here, I think it will take the UK years to recover. Uh, and it has, unfortunately, I have to say, become somewhat of a laughing stock, I think, in the world. Yeah, certainly, um, yeah, very interesting times. But, Charlotte, I'll turn to you now if I can, because meanwhile, thousands have taken to the streets in London to call for a second referendum. You mentioned it before, but how, how are they reacting to this development? Have you, have you been speaking to anybody out there? Has this, does this outcome boost their cause? Yeah, but let me first just say, because we've just learned about it, that the government wants to go, go back to Parliament on Monday and uh, table this deal that Johnson negotiated with the European Union once again. So that will happen on Monday. The government has just confirmed that, and then in the hopes, of course, that Parliament will vote in favour of it. The people here in the streets, tens of thousands today that gathered in central London, their core issue uh, was that they want a second referendum they want a vote on whether to approve Boris Johnson's deal and leave the European Union or whether uh, to remain in the European Union and just forget about what happened in the past three and a half years after that Brexit referendum. So uh, the news here that there will be an extension that Boris Johnson has to ask for one, uh, that is, he's being forced to ask for one, um, goes down well with them. They say uh, that they appreciate it. It gives them more time to fight for their cause, to maybe be uh, convince parliamentarians to in the end support a second referendum, a so-called people's vote, but also very heated atmosphere here around Parliament. We have to say, of course, most of the protesters are peaceful, um, but a lot of them uh, were just gathering around Parliament here, shouting at Conservative MPs who were coming out of Parliament. Uh, so really this uh, this day today, as, as Rob called it, momentous, um, it really mirrors with those protesters out here as well. Well, still lots of uncertainty. Charlotte Potts in London, Bert Rigott in Brussels, and Rob here with me in the studio. Thanks very much for your analysis.